Hello beautiful people. Today I wanted to talk about eight things that I learned from writing 10,000 words in a day. If you weren't already aware, on the 29th and 30th of July, to close out NaNoWriMo, a group of author tubers decided to do a 10k and 24 hour relay and I decided to participate. For Camp Nano, my goal was to just finish plotting my project, but since they were doing this, I decided I might as well give it a try and try to see if I could get the first 10,000 words before my official goal of starting to draft in August. So I did meet my goal, which was a huge surprise to me, and I'm gonna get into that in a little bit. But just so you know, these 10,000 words are in my work in progress Emma Proof, which I will link the video where I talked about why I'm writing Emma Proof and explain the plot of it a little bit. All these lessons are only pertaining to me. I'm not trying to give advice. I'm just saying what I've learned. And if you find something useful, feel free to go with that. And if you think something is not going to work for you, then don't use it at all. I'm just trying to share my experience. Lesson number one is that I can write a lot longer than I thought I could. At the beginning of this event, I really did not think that I would actually write 10,000 words. I just wanted to see how far I could go before I would stop, and I'll insert a clip where I explain this. I did want to talk about the 10k day and why I'm really excited for it and why I'm starting drafting early just to participate. I think that this will be a really good benchmark for me of how much I actually can write when I've really pushed myself. I haven't tried this ever before, and I think even if I only get 5,000, that's still a really good reason to be proud and I'll be happy with myself for pushing myself and getting 5,000 words in a day but I also just want to see what my limit is at this point in my writing life and process. I don't necessarily think that this is the best way to write. I don't think that everyone should do 10k days on a regular basis but I just want to try and see if this is for me. If I find this helpful and encouraging if it's worth it to not write the next day or two or three days after because I spent so long writing this or if I really should just write a thousand words a day and be more consistent and never have a day where I write over 5,000 words. And obviously all of this can change but I just want to have a benchmark for now how I'm feeling and maybe I'll try it again in you know, if I really like it, maybe I'll do it again in a couple months. I wasn't going to be upset with myself if I didn't finish the 10k. I just thought I just want to write as far as I can. And then once I get there, I'll stop and I'm not going to push myself so much that I'm really drained or anything. What I actually learned is that even after 10,000 words, I didn't really feel creatively drained at all. And I know a lot of this is adrenaline and because I was starting a brand new project that I was really excited for and not in the middle of editing something or whatever, but it did teach me a lesson about how much I believe in myself. I never felt like there was a point where I was pushing myself beyond what I was capable of. I wasn't overly tired or exhausted. There are a few points where I made a lot of typos, but then afterwards I took a break and I came back and I was fine. I did get stuck for a while between 6,000 and 7,000 words, and I think if I wasn't going for the numbers and just wanted to have a really productive writing focused day, that's what I would set as a goal for myself. If I was just trying to get a lot done in one day and had the whole day to dedicate to writing, I think that would be very reasonable for me. But because I wanted to participate fully in the event, and I really wanted to push through and see how far I could really go. I just took a break after I hit 7,000 words. I had lunch and I'm pretty sure I also watched a TV show or something. I didn't write for at least 30 minutes, maybe up to an hour, I don't exactly remember. And then I got back in and I was writing at a good pace again and that's when I knew I would pretty much finish in time. Learning that I was underestimating myself about this writing goal made me think of other goals that I am maybe underestimating myself in too. And I think this helped me see that maybe I don't need to do that as much. Lesson number two was that if I plot, I can write a lot faster. In my authortube newbie tag, I mentioned that I didn't like plotting, but I was just trying it out. I wanted to see if it would really have an effect on my ability to finish a draft or something since I never have before. And wow, I wrote so much with these scene cards that I made. I didn't like making them, but it made the drafting process a ton easier, at least here in the beginning. We'll see as we go forward. But I was making huge word counts that I've never done in 30 minutes or 45 minutes before. And some of this can be attributed to adrenaline, but I got a thousand words in one 30 minute sprint. And I'm not trying to brag or anything. Obviously everyone can go at their own pace, but 
I was so impressed with myself because I did something that I didn't think I was even capable of doing. I just kept writing and I didn't even realize how much I had written till the end and I was just so shocked with myself that that had even happened. So what I've learned from this is that I should probably keep outlining and maybe I'll find ways to make outlining more fun for me and look at different outlining methods. Michelle Schusterman actually just posted a video about outlining a novel with multiple POVs, which is similar to how I outlined my book. And I think that method is better than a lot of the methods that I've tried before and ended up giving up on. So I'll link her video below. She explains it really well with an example and she's just a very good teacher. Even though outlining doesn't come very natural to me and I don't find it very fun, I can definitely see the benefit of it and I guess I'll have to keep doing it. Number three is I write best along with other people. This might be a little bit redundant to say, but being on these live streams just helped so much. We kept track of our own word counts, but then we also had a collective word count for the entire 24 hours. And our goal at first was to get to 50k, and then to get to 100k, and then we ended up with like 138,000 words as a collective. And that was so motivating. I just really felt like I was a part of something during the whole time, and people were encouraging me, and I was encouraging other people, especially as we got closer to 10k. They would say, oh, one more sprint, you're gonna get the last 500 words. Or, wow, you got 800 words in 30 minutes, that's amazing. And we were all cheering each other on. Morgan Lee's stream was in the morning, which started at like 5 a.m. in my time zone. So I was not planning to attend at all, but I ended up waking up around six and I just got my tea. I journaled for a little bit just to set myself up for writing for the day. And I ended up joining the last of her sprints and I was not planning to do that and I got an extra 500 words. Being in that write-a-thon with other people really helped. I'm not sure I could have done this on my own. Lesson number four, the faster you write, the faster you notice your mistakes. There were a few times while I was writing that I realized that I wasn't as prepared to write as I thought I was. I don't think I can write without falling in love with my characters first, and there are a few characters that I don't think I had fallen in love with yet. The book is also middle grade and the protagonist is 10, and I felt like some of the words I was writing my protagonist wouldn't even know and weren't in her voice. The other issue I ran into is that there were references that characters made a lot but I hadn't thought about the things they were referencing. So the main character, Emma, and her brother watch TV together a lot, and I knew that she would make references based on the TV show they were watching, but I hadn't decided if I was gonna use a real TV show or create one, and what it even was. Do they watch a competition cooking show together? Do they watch a mystery? I just didn't know yet. I think I would have figured this out eventually if I were writing at a slower pace, but writing 10,000 words in a day, I didn't realize how often I would want to reference something that I didn't know existed or I didn't know how it existed in the characters' minds. So that became a big problem for me. The lesson number five was to use brackets and keep writing. Whenever I got to a point where I realized what I had just written was not how the character would write something, I would just put that in brackets so I knew what I was trying to say, so that when I go back and edit, I can change it to how the character would describe her own experience. It was a way of still writing something, but acknowledging that it wasn't perfect, and also acknowledging that I would go back and fix this. I think sometimes when I'm writing, I'm not thinking about my future self and that I will look at this again. So having the brackets as designated spaces to tell myself, you will look at this again, was really helpful for me to just keep going and get those 10,000 words. I did the same thing if there was a person or a place that I didn't have a name for. I tried to name a lot of minor characters or characters who just show up once, like the names of kids at school that aren't in the plot, but I wanted to make sure I was using consistent names. So I just put classmate's name and I put it in brackets and called it a day. Number six is that it's best, at least for me, to separate writing from anything writing related that isn't writing. By this I mean like research and world building. After I did the 10k day and it was so obvious to me that I really needed to figure out this TV show that Emma watches with her brother, I just took an hour of my next writing session and told myself, okay, I'm not gonna write anymore until I figure out what this TV show is. And I did some research on children's TV shows and thought about the stuff that I watched when I was younger and I came up with a TV show and I wrote down the basic premise, a few of the main characters, and also some concepts for some of the episodes that Emma would have watched. The next time I'm writing and I want to reference something from that TV show, 
I have a list that I can go from where I didn't before. I was able to do this in just an hour, and I think if I hadn't noticed this was a problem until much later, I wouldn't have been able to pick that out so quickly. I would have had to continue using brackets every single time or try to do research while I was writing and then get frustrated that I wasn't using my writing time as well as I could be. Lesson number seven is that your feelings about your writing are always changing. I said that all of these only apply to me, but during the write-a-thon people were talking about the different feelings they had on their work and it seemed like this was pretty universal for everyone. At the beginning of the write-a-thon, I was feeling so excited about this book and I was definitely feeling like it was going to be published and I was just, it's so funny, we never have a normal view of our own work. We always think it's either the best thing ever or it should never see the light of day. I, at the beginning, was so excited and I was like, kids are gonna read this and oh my goodness, this is gonna be so good, it's gonna change the world, all this stuff. And then the second I got to six or 7,000 words, I was like, this is the most boring thing I have ever read, this is never gonna be good, this is terrible, all this stuff. But I did, so I was like, okay, you think that. I acknowledged the thought and tried to like put it on a shelf and was like, I need, just need to get the words. I said I would write 10,000 in a day. And then I just kept going. I think having the commitment to write 10,000 words and being in the chats where everyone else was trying to write 10,000 words and telling people I know in real life about it was what made me keep going. And at a certain point, I was like, I will never finish this book. And then, of course, I woke up the next day and I was like, okay, I'll write. I'm not going to write today on Sunday because I'm tired from the write-a-thon. But I'll write it again on Monday and I'll be fine and this book will be good. And I learned that I didn't have to listen to the feelings about my writing. Even if they were saying that my writing was bad, I could keep going. Lesson number eight is don't forget to take care of yourself. I realized that the breaks that I took helped me actually be more efficient. The write-a-thon started at night and then picked up in the morning. And I think having that break, at least I know some people didn't sleep. But the that I took helped me to be more efficient and also helped me to have more fun with the write-a-thon. I went for a walk during the morning and I also took longer breaks for lunch and dinner. Like I mentioned before, I stopped to watch a TV show at one point. I really think that's what helped so much. I had realized after the write-a-thon there were a few goals that I didn't get to that week, but I'm okay with that because this week I'm focusing on different goals and I'm still writing, but it's not as intense. I don't know what could be more intense than a 10,000 word write-a-thon in 24 hours, but I'm trying to slow that down a little bit and focus on some other areas of my life. Before I end the video, I do want to give a shout out to everyone who helped organize the streams and set up this event, including JC Carpenter and Gwena the Wena and Morgan Lee and Mia the Vixen of Fiction and Tiffany and I'm probably forgetting people. I will leave links to everyone down below. So that's all I have for you today. If you liked this video, go ahead and like it down below. And if you want to see more from me, subscribe down below. I post new videos every Monday. So I'll see you next week. Bye friends.